I must start with the question which we were discussing prior to this yesterday's meeting, the one regarding the mention of death, of the dead coming to life again. Four times, as was claimed by some writer to you, and the references were given also. In Surah al But yeah. references are given, and you have noted the references, haven't yes, you? Yes, yes, sir. Okay. So shall we take them up one after the other as yeah. the list unfolds? Yes. Okay. You tell. But before starting uh, discussing the issue of death and life, whether death can come to life again or not, I would like to observe on the absurdity of the question itself. Because the questioner has forgotten the real issue of debate. He has completely forgotten that we have been debating with other non ahmadi Muslims the issue of his ascent to heaven and descent from there. Now, if somebody comes to life, would you call him having descended from heaven? He would be unearthed, dug out from the, from the earth. But the issue is completely beyond the area of our discussion which he has raised now. You know, the fact is that because in some of the traditions of Hazrat Abdul Muhammad Mustafa Sallallahu he is mentioned to have Yanzilo, you know, these are the words used, that he would descend Yanzilo. Now, forgetting the other most, the other meanings of the word Yanzilo, many of the medieval Muslim scholars take it to mean literally to have descended from heaven, you know, like this. And this has been the issue. So we say, we prove that as we can prove it from the Holy Quran that he's dead, so as such he can't descend from heaven. At best you can say he would be dug out from the earth. And you don't believe in that. So even if you prove the issue of, in general, of some dead being and having been revived, Still, it would not help you at all. Even if a hundred thousand dead are revived, still your point is not proved. Because you insist, and the only evidence you have in your favor is the word Yanzilo. So you interpret it as he would descend from heaven. And now you say, even if he is dead, he would appear. Where is the authority for that? Even if he is dead, why should he appear there? Because Muhammad Sallallahu has never mentioned that is Jesus, even if he dies, he would come out of the earth and start prophesying again. So first of all, this issue has to be clarified. This question is invalid. <laughs> now let's start as a separate issue, which is unrelated to the question of Jesus Christ being live or dead. It's a completely different issue. But because it has been raised, so I must answer that. Let's take up the verses mentioned one after the other, one by one. Auz billahi min ash-shaitan al-rajim. Bismillahir rahman rahim Wa iz qultum ya Musa lan numin alaka hatta nara Allah jaratan fa akhazat kum us-su'aiqatu wa antum tamzurun thumma basnaakum min baad mawtikum laallakum tashkurun Then we raised you from after your death, Lallakum Tashkurun, so that you may be grateful, you may express your gratitude to Allah. Here, the Orthodox Muslim scholars take this the word moth to be literal. Now, I'll come to the issue of what happened actually also in relation to the second verse, because this also applies to the same people. But let me first of all inform you that the word motha has different meanings, and it applies in different contexts and situations, uh, not exactly in the same manner. The word moth has different meanings in application to different situations. And the Arabic standard dictionaries, I have mentioned this. 
I haven't brought uh, any reference, but I remember that uh, many Arabic dictionaries speak of moth as as uh, sleep. Deep sleep also is termed as moth. And the Arabs say al motu uhtun no an nom uhtul mote or al motu uhtun nom. So they are similar phenomenon. Again, phenomena. And again, we find in the Holy Quran a verse which relates to the phenomenon of God withdrawing the souls to Himself and tells us that those of whom He has decided that they would die, He keeps them to Himself and never sends them back. Only those are sent back who are in a state of sleep. So any translation of this verse which contradicts verses like these is not acceptable because this is a categorical verse and this lies in the area of Mutashabihat. So what would you do? Would you let Mutashabihat rule the area of Muhkamat or will you let Muhkamat rule the area of Mutashabihat. You must decide on that issue as well. So I'll take it, take these things up one after the other, inshallah, as we proceed. First of all, the meaning of moth can also, it, it also means the spiritual death or annihilation of a people's moral and uh, social and other values. Such people are, as men, are mentioned as dead people. They are brought to life again. I'll prove that point again with a reference to the Holy Quran, but after a while. So let's start studying this together in bracket. Is Kataltum Nafsan Faddaratum Fiha Wallahu Mukhrijum Makuntum Tatumun? And when you murdered a person of great importance, nafsan, or an unknown person. It can be translated either way. Being nakara, it may mean an, a one of, of the persons, but it may also mean a very important person. Faddaratum fiha. Then you started disputing the issue among yourselves as to who could have killed him and why, and obscured the matter. Wallahu mukhrijum ma kuntum taktumun. God has decided to bring to surface what you have been hiding. Now, in the light of this, the next verse must be translated. Not completely in total disregard to what the, what the point of discussion is. Here the case must be understood. It is a case of a people who murdered someone and it was a conspiracy. They knew who did it, they knew why it was done, but they started disputing it among themselves and obscuring the issue in a manner that nobody knew what the truth was. While God had, God had decided that the truth would be brought to the surface. Now the manner in which they understand it was done is this. فَقُلْ نَذْرِبُوهُ وَبَعْدِهَا كَذَلِكَ يُحْجُ اللَّهُ الْمَوْتَى وَيُرِيكُمْ آيَاتِهِ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَعْقِلُونَ You know what they understand from this verse? They say Allah told them the device of bringing forth what they themselves were hiding. This is the issue. Of taking pieces of meat of that dead body and to beat other pieces of the meat with the same. This is how the dead. Imagine the dead. The manner in which Allah revives the dead. He takes the pieces of meat of one's body and beats the other with the same pieces. It's a very, very naive translation, not to say the least. My blood boils when I hear such a translation. While to Doraba is the word used for, mas, ma, ma, for expression of misal or muscle. 
يذب الله الأمثال يذب الله المثل etc. and the meaning is so clear Allah wanted to guide the leadership the the righteous leadership among them to discover who had done it. Now it's a deep uh, observation which I am going to make which is made by the criminologist, the specialist in crime that uh, the murderer repeats his crime in the same style or the criminal has a modus operandi whether he changes the plot, whatever he does, the modus operandi is like the signature or the thumbprint by which you can always recognize the criminal. And that is how the British police, the famous in the world for such things, always detects the criminal and the crime by saying, oh, that thing happened there, it had the same features, same similarities. So if we find a, the same crime and the, the same style occurring in Birmingham, in London, in other places, we must chase the same man. It has to be the same man. And this helps them reach the man. And this is not, a, this is a psychological observation or discovery of only recent times, maybe 100, 200 years. The Holy Quran, 1400 years ago, disclose this most wonderful truth that we tell you the method. There are such criminals in the society who repeat the crime in the same manner. So, bring to focus of attention similar cases and study them in relation to each other. Kazalika yuhjullahul mota. Here, the word Kazalika yuhjullahul mota applies to a situation like al qasas. Walakum fil qasas hayatun ya ulilalba. So, this is Allah, how Allah guarantees the sanctity of life among people. You must detect who the criminal is, you must punish him, and that is the way we have explained to you, this is how you should go about. And by doing that you will reach the criminal and you will punish him and then it will deter the criminals ever again contemplating killing another person. Kadalika yuhjullahul mawta, this is the discussion. This is exactly like walakum fil hayat pesas hayatun ya ulil al But you can understand only if you are ulil al not otherwise. Wa yurikum ayatihi lallakum taqilun. He shows you his signs so that you have some wisdom, some use of common sense. And what is the common sense? Allah, according to them, Allah revives the dead by taking a piece of meat from one dead, from the dead body's one part, and start beating with, with that the other part. Is that wisdom? Is that to which Allah is calling you? So having, you know, settled with this, then I'll turn back to the same, to the old verse and i explain what the meaning there is. First it, had, first it had to be established that the word moth according to the Quran, first of all it may mean many other things. Secondly, it, the revival may mean the sanctity of life and assurance that life will not be taken lightly. This is how revived. Traditions are revived and so on. This part of the verse should be highlighted. Yes, sir. Wallahu mukhrajum ma kuntum taktumun. This is the purpose of exercise. Yeah. God has decided to bring to surface what you are hiding. Is this the way how this should be brought to surface? You know? <laughs> this is the meaning of this. Now there, the meaning, the attribute to this verse is so nerve-wracking. Indeed, you know, it gets on your nerves because if you develop it further, then you'll know how meaningless and how absurd their understanding of the Quran is. You see, what the scenario, the maximum they build is this. 
you know what God did? God wanted to find out who killed. So God told them, let us revive this man who is murdered. At least he remembers. If I don't know, that is God doesn't know. <laughs> he would remember. So let's do this. You better quarter him further. <laughs> Break him into pieces, cut him into pieces, like a butcher. And then everyone should hold one piece and start beating each other. He said, don't, be, don't worry, this is exactly how Allah revives the dead. Well, what the Holy Quran tells us about the revival of death is just one call from Allah. And the dead will start running towards Him. It's a completely different scenario. And if this is the system of reviving death, why didn't they use it later on? Why can't we use it now? If this is Allah's sunnah, this is how He revives the dead, then it should work now as it worked in the past. Every mur murdered man must be quartered and the police is beaten and let's hear from him who it was. Until he's tortured to another death. <laughs> By beating part of his body with another party, he must be so tortured that unless he should speak, he said, no more, for God's sake, leave me alone. <laughs> I'm going to tell you. As if he were the murderer and the person who had run away, he was the murdered mur person. This man is being tortured. They, they make jokes out of the words of God. This is cruelty, absolutely unbearable. With permission of Hadur, uh, some of the commentator uh -huh. uh, said that Idrubuhu that uh, there is another verse before that about this uh, cow uh, which they uh, yes. slaughtered uh -huh. and say Idrubuhu by a part of this that, that cow. Uh, yes the some said this is the tail some uh, said this is the same this is i've heard that same too. idea they're just conjectures some people thought perhaps it is not proper for us to say that <coughs> allah won't desire them to quarter the dead man and beat him with his own parts while the cow is mentioned earlier here if one person is mentioned and the zameer must go to him that is why i translated it like yes, this yes, sir. But they insist, some as you are quite right, yes. that take the meat of the cow, which was slaughtered elsewhere some times ago. Take a piece of that meat and with that beat this man. This dead body will feel more pain if it is beaten by the flesh of the cow. <laughs> that is a system of torture, not reviving the dead, reviving the people from the dead. What sort of manner that is? How can they understand? How can they digest this such a thing? <laughs> and you have not perhaps mentioned that this experiment should be repeatable. If this is how Allah does it, and Allah has told us, the, the, them, that if you do follow me and imitate me, you will also be, bring, be able to bring about the same results. Mm -hmm. so it's a constant feature. Now this is, here we have the recipe by reviving all the dead. Right? Uh -huh. <coughs> now this verse, Why is kultum ya Musa lan no min ka hatta nar Allah jaratan? When they said this, they died a spiritual death. Said lan no min ka hatta nar Allah jaratan. And in another verse in the Holy Quran, when people claim that you do this unless we see God, Allah says, that they have, act, they have acted in a manner that uh, is the worst of denial of truth. You know, when you demand such things, they become mutakabirin, as if they are greater than God and they are demanding that we will be able to see God. It is an enormous thing which they are demanding. And this enormity, of crime makes them spiritually dead. And the Holy Quran has not only quoted this, but elsewhere repeatedly the Holy Quran has enumerated their crimes. Each crime could kill them spiritually. But Allah says, then we forgave, when, then we overlooked, then we forgave, then we overlooked. Exactly the same process is being mentioned here. Now what happened to Moses? He also swooned. 
when he said, show me your face, there it was not considered a crime because when Allah inquired from him why, he believed, he said, it's not a condition for my belief. The crime is this, non nomina laka hatta nar Allah jana. To have a desire to see God is no crime. But if you have a condition laid on this, that, oh God, unless you show us we are not going to believe in you, or not going to believe in any messenger of yours. This was the crime not committed by Moses, but committed by them. So Moses was not spiritually dead, he swooned and came to after a while with the grace of Allah. But these people, <coughs> for these people, that sign was not after shown, not shown. For Akhazat kumu saayakato wa antum tanzurun. Saayaka came and you were watching it. But it was not God's face. God is not visible to human beings. They saw the sayaka and they were watching. Thumma basna kum imbade motikum. Here the word moth is used exactly in the same connotation as Moses was revived from near death after he had experienced the same thing. Nowhere it is mentioned in history, in Bible, anywhere that these people were stricken with lightning and were killed. As they understand, if the lightning fell directly upon them, then they would have been charred to death, split into pieces. And such an important event must have been recorded in history. It's completely silent about it. So what happened was that God says that you, this demand that we will not believe in you until we see the face of God was a deadly sin, deadly in this sense, that you are spiritually dead. Then God revived you after your moth, Lallakum Tashkurun, so that you begin to see and be grateful to Allah. This is the only acceptable meaning. The other thing is just concoction of stories and tales and it does not relate to the Sunnah of Allah. Uh, that means Basnakum here that he forgave them. He revived them spiritually. Yes. They were they died spiritually. Yes. So Allah revived them spiritually. Yes. Uh, by forgiving them and uh, of course uh, by yes. forgiving them first. Yes. And then counting them among the believers once again. No. Yes. The conditions was not fulfilled. Allah did not, this is what I have been trying to say, Allah did not accept their demand that He will show His face to them. It's impossible for even a prophet of God to see with naked eyes God who is invisible. So Allah say, didn't say that because we showed our face, so you died and then we revived you. The same thing happened as it happened to Moses. The lightning struck some rock somewhere and this force of lightning made them swoon and lose consciousness. That was physically near death, one thing. And spiritually they had died the moment they demanded that we lay uh, a condition to our faith that one, unless we see Allah with our naked eyes, we will not believe in Him. This they never did anyway. God never showed Him, showed them. So why did he revive them? To remain, to have a new life of kufr? Because God never accepted the condition. He, he never showed them their face. So <coughs> the common sense demands that we translate it in a manner that the spiritual divine words are always translated and understood. There, sometimes Allah speaks in parables, sometimes in metaphors, and the word life and death are very specifically mentioned by God, metaphorically, which does not apply to physical life and death. So when one can prove it this from the Holy Quran, why must they insist that here is a case of a physical revival, not of spiritual revival? 
right? Yes, excuse me, Hador. This sa'iqa, it is a sign of wrath of God because wrath they of, did so. Exactly. Yes, sir. In case of Moses, Allah accepted his excuse. That was not wrath. Allah accepted his excuse that I, I understand it's only out of love that yes, you want yes, to see me. Yes, 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 yes. It is not a condition of belief in me. This case, though similar, is different. That is why I am taking time to make yes, it clearly yes, yes, different. Yes, 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 it's very clear. Two different things. Yes. They had laid the condition that unless we see God with our naked eyes, jaratan, we will not believe. This condition kills a people spiritually. They already are dead. That's one aspect. The second, God decided to keep them or make them alive once again. Make so he showed his wrath or display here by uh, sending a bolt of, of, of uh, lightning. Saika, lightning striking somewhere, not them directly. And they swooned exactly as Moses had swooned, but with a different reason yes. altogether. Yes, of course, yes. So Allah revived them again from that near death and then forgave them and let them live a life of belief once again. This is how I understand this verse. Yes, yes, now the third ayah, Aw ka lazi marra ala qariyatin wa haya khabiyatun ala urushita. Or the example, remember, bring to mind the example of a man or the case of a man, marra ala qariyatin, who passed by a habitation or a township. It was destroyed totally, fallen, its roofs had fallen down and it was just in ruins. He inquired about the life of this township. This is the question you must remember. The question is asked very specifically regarding the revival of a township. Not the people. Not the people. Yes. Kefo yuhi lahu bada moteha e al qariya. Nothing else. Now, what is the answer according to them? If they understand it literally, if they insist it, it is literal, then the meaning would be Allah killed him instead. For a hundred years. Now, if by that hundred years' death he was to be shown the miracle of the revival of that township, it would still mean some sense. But according to their understanding of this verse, when he is brought to back to life, Allah doesn't show him, look at this basti, look at the kariya. Don't you see it live again? No. He says, look at your food, it is not rotten. Look at the water, it's still there. Look at your himar. And then understand how we resurrect the bones and put flesh on the bones. And this is the answer to your uh, question which you asked. Now, be honest about it, is this the answer to the question, how that township is revived. While well, the township remains completely forgotten by Allah in His answer. SubhanAllah. So, what means is, you ask this question, how the will kill you? You die and remain lying over there. For a hundred years, and the question of revival could be perhaps related to the issue of bones and flesh being, uh, you know, dressed over to the over the bones, but how could water play a role being still there for one hundred years, not having evaporated? And what about the animals and dogs passing by and the human beings watching a, 
a dead man lying there, turning into bones, and nobody is taking care of anything. Okay, they thought, let them rot, the, the, the person as well as the a donkey. But what about the food? What about the water? Why was it left untouched? This is a sign from Allah to remind him. You say that you lived on, tarried only for a part of the day or a day maximum. And you're right. Look at your water, look at this. But there is more to it than that. We gave you a sleep covering the history of a hundred years in which you have been told, given the message of how we will revive these people. This, not these people, this township. And then, when it was explained to him, then he understood. Otherwise he didn't understand the meaning of what they dream. And when he understood, he, he said, yes, I believe that when you so decide, you bring to life whatever you feel like bringing to life. Now we understand this, is, this case to have occurred, this uh, historic, e historical event to have taken place when according to the Bible Nebuchadnezzar had destroyed Jerusalem and it was that Korea which was in ruins and shambles. Hadrat Hizkil, Prophet of Allah, he passed by and it saddened him to see the most holy township that there was. Of course they loved him and he being a prophet of God, he loved him the most. He said, how would you revive this? It's in complete ruin. So Allah said, I'll show you. It will, the message was that a hundred years sleep means a sleep covering a passage of hundred years in history. Not lasting that long, but covering the passage of history of one hundred years which was a promise that within 100 years this township would be revived and come to life again. That is exactly what happened. Within 100 years Jerusalem was rebuilt and if anyone could visit that after that 100 years, he could see, yes, it has come to life. Now, if he had actually been dead for 100 years, he should have noticed this. God have shown you this, don't you see now? Why to mention the, the, the food, the water and the donkey? God should have demonstrated you, look here, look, this is the vasti. There you've been lying dead. Isn't it, isn't it come to life? So this is the only acceptable meaning because God is the source of wisdom, not forced of, of confused thinking. Please. And Ali. it is only possible to prove exactly the opposite of what they are proving. God pointed these things to show to him that you have not been dead really for 100 years. Had you been dead, you wouldn't see your, your, your mass standing fresh as it is and you shouldn't have seen, found your water untouched. So this proves exactly the opposite of what they are trying to prove from this. Next. Yes, sir. وَإِذْ قَالَ إِبْرَاهِيمُ رَبِّ أَرَيْنِي كَيْفَ تُحْيِي الْمُوْتَى And remember also when Abraham begged Allah, show me how you bring the dead to life. قَالَ أَوَلَمْ تُحْمِي mean the same question of like, like that of Moses, you know. Mm -hmm. Don't you believe? He said, قَالَ بَلَا وَلَاكِ لَيَطْمَئِنَّ قَلْبِي Of course I do but only to deeply satisfy my heart. Now, what was the question? The first question was about the Kariya. This question is about people who do not believe, spiritually dead. And he tried, preached right and left like Noah and did all he could. And God had promised him that he would give him a large party of followers. And they were not moving, as if they were completely dead. And the ask question was, how will they be brought to life? The answer was, we will tell you, we can demonstrate to you. Take four birds, surhunna ilaika, 
make them familiar, make them familiar with you or make them uh, love you, bring them closer to you. By raising the birds you can do that. Then throw them in diff to different mountains around and then call them. They'll all come flying to your call. This is what happens with the birds. You know, where is the answer? What is the meaning of this? The meaning is a very profound meaning of how the dead are revived spiritually, spiritually dead are revived. It is the influence of the love of a prophet over them, which gravitates them towards the prophets, which makes them love not first the message, but first the person of the prophet. And when they be fall in love with the Prophet because of his overwhelming beauty and charm of his character, then they are revived, not otherwise. You can practice, you can experiment it in ordinary life. Nobody would become interested in Islam in, West, in the West unless he's interested in a Muslim and his character. So this is what Allah said, these are the people, first make them fall in love with you. Make them your own. Then when you call them, then they will answer to your, your call. Because you will be like their, their master. And that is how Allah calls the spirits. They recognize the call of the master. And when he says, come, and they always go. This is the real meaning of the how Allah revives, not by beating your flesh with another flesh. Okay, yes. So, I'll come after this, I have to say a very important thing, uh, which is uh, related to this, even if we go, make a, take a few minutes extra. Yet we have about three, four minutes, I know. You see, it's not just a question of faith or belief or ordinary interpretation. It's a very serious crime on the part of any Muslim to misinterpret the Qur'an in a manner as to make Hazrat Muhammad Rasulullah target of enemy's criticism. This is what they are doing. By misinterpreting the Qur'an, they are producing Salman Rushdi's and the rabid orientalists who attack Hazrat Muhammad Rasulullah and jeer at Islam and say, look here, what sort of prophet he is. Moses did this, Jesus raised the people from the dead. And that and that happened. But when we asked him to do some, something, he failed. He said, no, this is not how it happens. They believe that Jesus was raised to the heaven, bodily. And when the same and the worst crisis occurred to Muhammad during Ahad, he was buried under the corpses of others for a while. God did not raise him. When they questioned him, why don't you rise up and bring back a book? He said, no. Hal kuntu illa bashar rasoola. So they laugh at the Muslims and Muhammad Wasallam by telling us, on one side he himself admits that the prophets have seen the revival of the dead themselves and the Holy Quran recognizes it. They believe, on the other hand, the prophets have been bodily raised. They believe, on the other hand, that a book was bodily descended upon Moses and handed over to him as written. And when we demand the same thing as a proof of his prophethood, he says, no, no, it doesn't happen. So why to drag Islam into this indefensible position and give the enemy a, 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 an opportunity to make tar Hazrat Muhammad Rasulullah the target of their criticism. And they don't see that when the same words apply, uh, appear in the case of Hazrat Rasulullah they translate it differently there. Ya ayyuhal lazina amanu stajibu lillah wa li rasoole iza daakum le ma yuhiikum Where do their, does their wisdom disappear at that time? Has not Allah said that answer to the call of Muhammad Rasulullah Sallam when he calls you to revive you from the dead? There they say it is spiritual. Yes, good. 
But why isn't spiritual in the case of others which have been mentioned in the Holy Quran? When it, they always treat Muhammad in, in, this, in this way and treat other historical prophets in a very different miraculous way. When it comes of the word Nuzul in application to Jesus Christ, they say, you see, Nuzul, how could he do Nuzul when he, was, he never ascended? Nuzul means some prophet must come from the heaven. But when it comes, the same word about Hazrat Muhammad Rasulullah then what are the meanings? Qad anzal Allahu ilaykum anzal Allahu ilaykum zikr al-rasoolan yatlu alaykum ayatillah It was there Muhammad Muhammad Rasulullah speaking of a prophet Suzul. It is Allah here telling them that this prophet who is a personified memory of Allah you know it, God has descended him from the heaven. From himself, the word heaven is not, but he, Qad anzal Allah. Ask them what is the meaning of Nuzul here? He was born of a human, human mother. So they distort the meaning of the Quran, always to the disadvantage of Islam and Muhammad Wasallam. This is what we cannot tolerate. And why didn't it happen at the time of Rasulullah Sallam? Do you remember any case when he revived anybody from the dead? On the contrary, when Rasul Akram was approached by the son of the martyr Hazrat Jabir bin Abdullah to console him, you know what he told him? He said that when he appeared before God, God asked him, I am so happy with you, tell me what your wish is. The wish was, Make me live again. Revive me from this. And let me die in your cause again. Let me be murdered once again. Mm -hmm. And I want this to happen continuously. Let me revive. Please revive me and make me die in your cause again. You know what the answer Muhammad Rasulullah told this boy was? So Allah said, this cannot happen. Because I have decided never to return the dead from the world, from the territory of the dead to the territory of life, live again. Again, they do not understand the language used there. I mentioned a verse about norm and death, and I mentioned there is a very important verse that Allah says, those whom He has really made dead or decided, decides to die, to cause death, He never returns them. What about that Rajul, Marra ala Qariyatin? Was he sent back or not? If he had sent back, then it was not death. Because there will be contradiction in the Holy Quran. There it is a categorical statement, no exception is mentioned. That death is like sleep. We withdraw the souls. But those we have decided to cause death upon, we never return them. Was this man returned or not? How could he return from death when Allah says we never do that? He must have returned from sleep, not from death. Yes. And they say, Kaifa antum is the nazal of hikum, ee sabnu maryam. So they say, nazal, nazal, nazal. Why don't they say nazal in the Quran? Only they say in the Hadith? I am disgusted. <laughs> but the menace samai is not used there. Yanzil only. No.